that's an occasion of our hearts and the words of my mouth pleasing in your sight. And Father, please touch our hearts and move our hearts. Make all the hardness away and let us follow you wholeheartedly, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we celebrate uh, Thanksgiving, um, which includes, which includes uh, thanking God for the uh, fifth pastoral anniversary of our pastor. We thank for the fifth anniversary of our church. And we thank God for the many miracles and blessings he has bestowed upon us during the last year. Pastor mentioned already a lot of the miracles and blessings God granted us this year. It was certainly not comprehensive, there were certainly more. God has been so good to us, just as God promised. Psalm 59.2 says, Let us come before Him, before God, with thanksgiving, and extol Him with music and song. So this have, has been done already a lot. And in Deuteronomy 12.7 it says, And there you shall eat before the Lord your God, and you shall rejoice in all that you put your hands to, you and your households, in which the Lord your God has blessed you. The eating will come later, Carry on. and we thank God for this as well. So we rejoice before God and we have some food later as well. Our sermon is about Isaiah 40, 1 to 11. I read it and Brother Asher will put it on the screen that you can read along with me. Isaiah 40 verses 1 to 11. Isaiah 40 verses 1 to 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her forced labor has been completed, her iniquity has been pardoned. For she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. This was our punishment, but it was over now. Verse 3, a voice calling of one in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make a straight highway for our God in the desert. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground will become smooth and the rugged land a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Verse 6, a voice says, cry out, and I ask, what should I cry out? All flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fall, when the breath of the Lord blows on them. Indeed, the people are grass, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. Verse 9. Go up on a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Raise your voice loudly, O Jerusalem. Herald of good news, lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might. His arm establishes his rule. His reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those who have young. Well, I first want to talk briefly about John the Baptist and how it applies to us. Then I want to talk about the Word of God. Then thirdly, I want to talk about the return of Christ. Fourth, the leading of Christ, and my question is, 
do we follow? Do we follow the leading? He is a good shepherd. And fifth, I made an excursion to Christmas as we are approaching Christmas and I will call for people to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. If anybody did not receive him yet, also the children, 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 children. If the children want to receive the Lord as their Savior, they should do so as well. And I would suggest then for to pray to receive him, we go around to the kids' room, everybody who wants to receive Christ as his Lord and Savior. And um, I only can pray for for these people. Okay, now we go to the verses 3 to 5. 3 to 5. It says, The voice of one calling, prepare the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make a straight highway for our God in the desert. This is not only making the environment all right for God, it's also about making our hearts ready for God. The angel Gabriel in Luke 1 says about uh, John the Baptist, he will, pick, he will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord the God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. John the Baptist came to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. I want to ask you, are our hearts ready for the Lord? Did we receive Jesus? Do not wait. Do not wait until the last minute. So if you did not receive him, do it today. Then we go on to the verses 6 to 8 the word of God. First, God reminds us of the mortality of our bodies. All flesh is like grass, the grass withers, the flowers fall. So our bodies are mortal and one day they will decay. The Bible tells us the bodies go back to the dust, to the earth it came from, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. So this will sometime happen unless the Lord comes before them. But in contrast to our mortality, there is the word of God which stands forever. The word of God does not change. God does not change. In James 1.17 we read, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. God does not change, and likewise the word of God does not change. It does not need an update, like our software sometimes does. The word of God does not need an update. God knows the end from the beginning. In Isaiah 46, 10, it says, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. God says, I make known the end from the beginning. God knew already in the past what's going to happen in the future. And so God arranged his word that it's applicable for all generations to come. It was applicable to Moses when he gave them the commandments. It was applicable to our fathers. It's applicable to us. It's still applicable to our children. If God says, do not commit adultery, honor your father and your mother, this applies to us today just as it applied in the past and will apply in the future. 
Then we go on to in the next part, 9 to 11. We read that Jesus, our God, is leading us gently. Jesus is the good shepherd, as, as we know, and he wants to lead us. Sometimes some of us, including me, are stubborn and do not listen to what God tells us to do. That is not good. We cannot expect real happiness and real peace if we do not obey God. We cannot expect real peace and happiness if we do not obey God. You all know the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, All Our Sins and Griefs to Bear. Certainly. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All we do because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Certainly, that is very important. We need to pray more. At least I have to pray more. But it's not only prayer. We have to obey. We can't just pray and ask God, please, please do this, please do that, and we don't obey. We need to obey that God can bless us. Jesus told us in John 13, verse 34 and 35, a new command and I give you, love one another. Jesus didn't say a new option I give you, Jesus said a new commandment, we have to do it. It's not an option, Jesus definitely wants us to do it. Love one another, as I have loved you, so also you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. If we do this, if we start biting each other and hurting each other, if we support each other, then we read in Isaiah 58, 8, then, then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will come quickly. Your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. So, and we will only listen to God and do what God tells us to do. And love each other, support each other, help each other. Then, God will send healing and God will bless us even more. In spite of my and our shortcomings, God bless the church already richly, as we heard before from Pastor, as Pastor gave us a very long list about how, how God has blessed us. I have at home a diary where I write down things where God has helped me. And so later I can look through it and can be reminded of God's blessings for me. I recommend that you do the same. Write down answers of prayers and may God bless you and you keep it for the future. And there are things you might have forgotten and you might be surprised you see all the blessings of God. We should count your blessings. There's a song. Can the classic count your blessings, please? Trusting so
subscribe. So, we need to count our blessings. And we are blessed because Matthew 28, 20, we read, and look, Jesus says, I am with you every day until the end of the age. So we don't have to worry, we don't have to be afraid of anything because Jesus promised to be with us all the days until the end of the age. And in Samuel 2, 2 we read, there is no rock like our God. There is no rock like our God. Our God is reliable and we can lean on our God. And if we do so, He will never disappoint us. So we can look confidently towards the future. Now, we read said, Jesus Um, I left out the point of the Lord will return in power. So we come to this now, before we come to this message. Um, how will the Lord return? He will not be born again as a baby, but He will come in power and glory as the Bible tells us. Jesus said, as the flash a lightning goes from the west to the east, brightens up the whole sky, so everybody will see him when he comes. We read here, the Lord, it's verse 10, Isaiah 40, 10, Behold, the Lord our God will come with might. Brother Asher. Uh, the text for... 9 to 11. Also, we read, the Lord God comes with might. His arm establishes his rule. Next time he will not come as a tender baby, but he will come with power and glory, and he will rule. So it's 9 to 11. Thank you. And he will come with power. And Isaiah 54, 23, God says, By myself I have sworn, my mouth has uttered in all integrity a word that will not be revoked. Before me every knee shall bow. It's not like first time that Jesus comes in humility and weakness to be crucified, but he comes with power and authority and every knee will bow before him. And he will bring his reward with him. And Marshall 16, 27 says, For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Jesus will reward every person. Well, we can just trust in the blood of Jesus that He shed for us that He will forgive us everything where we failed. But let's try not to disappoint Jesus. Now we come to the last point about Christmas. We were talking about His coming back. Now we look back. When he came in John 1, it says, Jesus came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Jesus came to his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. I want to ask you, do you want to receive him? Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Isaiah 40, 23, it says, 
Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. Turn to me and be saved, all ends of the earth. Will you turn to God? And in Joel 2, 32 we read, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Do you want to call on to the name of the Lord if you did not do so before and get saved? Then I would like to ask you to come after the sermon straight away down to the kids club room and we pray together there. Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they will eat with me. In Isaiah 13.18, it says, The Lord longs to be gracious to you. The Lord longs to be gracious to you. The Lord put in so much effort to make you his friends. In Jesus, he came down to the earth to show us how, how we should live, to guide us, to give us direction, show us the will of God. And because he knew that we were unable to do it perfectly well, that often when we fail because of this, and the end he died for us on the cross. What more could God do for us? What else could he have done than coming down in Jesus on our earth, guiding us and dying for us in the end? So if you did not receive Jesus, please do so today. And right after the end of the sermon, we go around to the kids' room. We thank God again for all what He did for our church. God has been the pillar of the church and in our lives. We can't do things on our own. Isaiah 30, 15 says, In repentance and rest is your salvation. Sometimes there's no point in struggling, struggling, struggling. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. May God help us to do this, trust in Him, and rest in Him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, come on, Pastor. To the lights of the Amen. Talk about bless you for the someone. Someone is about holiness, rapture, for everybody to be doing the will of God. That's why I'm saying, fear God and keep his commandments. This is the entire detail of a man. God will please you more. God will bless you, bless your family and our